Our scripture reading today comes from Ezekiel 34, 11 through 16, and 20 through 24. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks, where they are among the scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all places to which they have been scattered on a day of the clouds and, th and thick darkness. I will bring them out, of the, out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses, and in all inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture. There shall be good pasture, and there shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my own sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the stray, and I will blind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you have pushed with flank and shoulder and buttered all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set them over, I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and I shall feed them, and he shall feed them, and be their shepherd, and I will avoid, will be their God, and my servant David shall be the prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Pray with me once more, if you would, please. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Uh, today, maybe you noticed in reading the front of your bulletin, it's, it's, known, it's often known as what is called the Segway Sunday. Um, it, 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 uh, it wraps up on the liturgical portion of the year, what we often call the ordinary time. Um, and then we have sort of this, this, this segue Sunday, and then it steps into Advent, this time of anticipation, this time of waiting and hopefulness for Emmanuel, God with us. So they call it, as you can tell, uh, a segue Sunday. Um, I, I used to have trouble with segues growing up. I had, um, I obviously don't now, because I, I don't know if you noticed, I just segued right into a story about segues just seamlessly, which I think was brilliant. Um, okay, so my aunts, my aunts used segues a lot, and I remember being little and thinking um, how cool it sounded. Like, they would say something like, speaking of thus and such, um, what about thus and such? And I just, conversationally, I just, oh, I like the way that sounded, and I would try to do it myself, but I didn't really understand that thus and such and thus and such needed to have something in common. Do you see? Um, I didn't quite understand. So I would say things like, like uh, um, speaking of lunch, Roland, where's your cat? <laughs> <laughs> Which caused my <laughs> parents some understandable um, concern, I guess. Um, eventually we, we, we figured out that I was not interested in eating anyone's pets. That was not what I was saying, I just didn't know exactly how to use the segue. It's complicated, the segue. Um, the point is, I'm not sure, the point, maybe the point is that we should start paying attention to our segues, uh, partly because Roland's cat will end up being eaten, and we don't need that. Um, and then also because we might actually ignore some pretty, pretty significant Sundays on our church calendar. Um, today is Christ the King Sunday. It's not a Segway Sunday. It is actually a very, very important day. Christ the King Sunday is, uh, is a time that gets us ready for Advent. But it also has a pretty recent and pretty, pretty important history. In the 1920s, 1925 actually, is when the Roman Catholic Church first introduced us 
to introduce us to uh, what we call Christ the King Sunday. And it was in response to something um, in Mexico uh, and a few other uh, governments around the world, but primarily at this time in Mexico, they were trying to declare, the government was trying to declare itself the ultimate authority in its people's lives. Um, and so that even carried as far as how they should believe. They systematically tried to uh, outlaw any uh, religious symbols to be shared. So not only are they sort of the legal authority in their lives, but they are even the religious authority in their lives, and they put some priests in jail, like I said, they outlawed some symbols, things like that. And so in the face of what for these Mexican people was pretty much the most powerful institutional force they knew, the church came in and said, no, 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 you're in charge of a lot of things, but Christ is king, and you are not in charge of what we believe. It was a big statement at the time. It's a big statement today. And there's a connection, I believe, to uh, what's going on here with these Babylonians. Or excuse me, these, uh, these um, Israelite people in Babylon. Remember in these, um, in, in Ezekiel, in a lot of these sort of major prophet books, the people are in exile, right? And so... Um, with that, we see the Israelites under the thumb of an even more oppressive um, rule than uh, Mexico in 1925. This one, this one was exile. And so, not only had um, the Babylonian government said, this is what you should believe or what you should do. No, no, no. They had dragged these people from their homes and put them in another land and pulled them as far as possible from their central place of worship. Not only had they done those things, but no, no, no. The Babylonian Empire, emperor was in fact considered to be a god. I am your god, says the Babylonian emperor. So, it's not so hard to see how this might have been more than just a little bit devastating to these people. And so Ezekiel shares a word from God. He says, I myself will search for my sheep. I will seek them out. We need to know that that in and of itself is revolutionary because we're a little bit separated from things like kings, monarchs, emperors. We, don't, we, we haven't had a lot of those in the United States for several, several weeks, decades, ever. Um, but, but just to be clear, they don't go ser searching after their, their constituents. Okay? They don't go trying to take care of them. They don't leave the palace on their behalf. No king, ruler, emperor does such a thing. You are subjected to their authority simply because you are subjected to their authority. And yet, God says, I myself will go searching for my sheep like a shepherd. I will seek them out. The shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among the scattered sheep, so that so I will seek out my sheep. Later on in 16, it says, I will seek the lost. I will bring back the stray. I will bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak. This is no ordinary king. This is a God that goes searching after God's people. Now, luckily, we don't really have to deal with all of this sort of kingly stuff or um, oppressive emperors and things like that because... As we all know, we here are in a democracy, and so we don't have to worry about that stuff. Nobody rules over us. You know, we're a government, you know, for the people, by the people, of the people. Nobody rules, right? Right? Oh, well, we up here. Okay. <laughs> it's just, because maybe there's this teensy problem, tiny, tiny, tiny problem. Um, I, I, I kid you not, just this week I read a little study. It wasn't a little study. I read a giant study. A study that actually has been done for the past, I'm not sure how many years, here at Princeton uh, University. They looked at over 1,800 policy initiatives from over 20 years of our country, from, from uh, 1981 to 2002. And do you know what they found out? They found out, they found out that we might not quite be the democracy we thought we were. <laughs> It said this, there was one clear factor in deciding what policies got passed in our government. One factor. The desire of the richest percentile of Americans and the most well-funded business lobby groups. That's it. That's it. There's a quote, often even against the will of the majority of voters. Money. 
Money is what decides what is right, what are law will be. And I will follow that by saying the people we give our money to are making some very big decisions. But wait a second, all right? Wait a second, we say. I vote every November. I'm marching to that voting booth on a Tuesday, and I vote. And I vote according to my beliefs. I vote according to my faith, and I'm with you. I get it. I feel the same way. And I need to stop before I go much further than this, because I feel like the subject that we might, it might feel like we're talking about politics, and I want to be really, really clear. We're talking about God. We're talking about the false gods that we have made and set them up over ourselves. This is very much about a conversation about God and false gods and what we've done to turn our eyes away from our first love. It's tricky. It's sneaky. And it's very, very powerful. I wonder if we vote with Election Tuesday faithfulness as we cast our ballots in the checkout line. As we hand our money to the cashier, this study, this study says that we are casting a much heavier vote than we ever will on a Tuesday in November. Because we're handing our money to people who will make very big decisions. Our emperors and our kings. And I don't bring all of this up to you um, because I uh, think that we have arrived that Debbie and I have arrived in terms of how we do things financially. We haven't. We haven't in the least. Matter of fact, let me just be clear. I never stand before you as somebody who has arrived, but I don't think that means we don't talk about this stuff. I think that's exactly why we do talk about this stuff. Um, frankly, the other day, I just realized as I was writing this sermon, I walked through a farmer's market with a vegan friend of mine talking about, I kid you not, food justice and what it's like to invest in good food systems and things like that. And I look to my right and there's a stand that sells these great little breakfast burritos. And I'm pretty sure they're not very responsibly, responsibly resourced. And I, uh, mid-conversation, stopped and went over and bought a bacon, egg, and cheese <laughs> breakfast burrito as I was talking to my vegan friend. And I got three bites into it before I realized that there was any dis like disconnect between what I was doing. And then I ate it fast so she didn't have to watch, you know, because I had to get it out of there to be nice. We don't even notice our own hypocrisy. That's the scary thing about today. We're not looking at governments that are trying to, like, to, to, to crush our faith. We're not looking at emperors that are dragging us out of our... No, it's much sneakier. It's things we love. We pay our oppressors. We are not in ancient Babylon, and we are not in 1920s Mexico. And our emperors are not innately evil. It's things like, it's words like commerce. It's not a bad thing. It's words like capitalism. That's a neutral subject. It's just a way of doing economy. It's words like marketing, which is really just a way of getting the word out about your product. And yet, these are the things that have silently and sneakily dragged us away from our first love. These are the new emperors, if we are not careful. I uh, am not an especially brave person. I, um, I worry about a lot of things, and I worry about making the decision to preach a sermon that includes words like politics and voting. It's always a dangerous thing, you know. But I don't think people realize just how powerful this almighty dollar is. Just what a God it has become. And I worry, I worry when I see Ezekiel's critique of the ways that Israel's religious leaders did not shepherd their sheep. Like when God says things like, I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong, I will feed them with justice. At one point, it even says, I will destroy. And frankly, that scares me even more. Part of the reason I think we look at this is because the next four weeks will be Advent. But we should remember that those four weeks are also called shopping season. Be <coughs> of your emperor's friends. Know when you're in the voting booth. Know when you're expressing your faith. It is all the time. 
Beware of any message that is sent to you that says that you are lacking until you own this thing because we have a God that says you are enough. He is Christ our King. Amen.